when you like first started packing parachutes, was it a little nerve wracking because you're like, fuck, like this is a well, I actually life. had a cool situation because I went to, um, I got a job at Skydive Las Vegas because they were looking to hire parachute packers. Mm-hmm. So how I got into skydiving, um, I wanted to learn how to skydive. Right, I decided I want to be. A skydiver. I want to do my own jumps. I want to jump by myself. Yeah. So I went to the drop zone. Uh, it was Vegas Extreme. Now it's Go Jump. And I actually, uh, like, like, literally just on a on a whim, I just drove to the drop zone. I'm like, I'm gonna find out how to do this. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about it for like six months. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. I so yeah. So I go to the drop zone and I actually find the dude that did my jump, Kevin. I forget what his last name is, but his first name's Kevin. Um, I find him and I recognize him. He obviously doesn't recognize me. Because he so many does, people. you know, yeah. 10 jumps a day. But um, I was like, yeah, so you did my jump. How do I get into skydiving? And he pretty much he laid out the groundwork for me. He's like, here's how I did it. And I started by getting hired at a drop zone, packing parachutes. Uh, then they would give me like one or two free skydives every day. Wow. And I did that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, nice. if you work at a cool drop zone, they'll do that. Um, it's it's hard to find, but if you work at a really cool drop zone, they'll, they'll give you a free load every day. Um, and I did that up until I got 500 skydives and he pretty much laid out for me what I just laid out for you, you know, a license, B license, C license, D yeah. license. And he's like, once I got my D license at 500 jumps, I just got my tandem rating, became professional, got hired as a professional skydiver. And I was wow. like, that's what I'm going to do. And I was like, all right, first step, I need to get hired as a parachute packer. Mm-hmm. So I go on Craigslist and I'm like, how to get hired as a parachute packer. <laughs> there's like two drop zones. There's three now, but there was two drop zones within like a couple hour drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one in Boulder City and the one that you went to over in Jean. Yeah. Um, the one in Boulder City was actually hiring that at that moment. So I went in there like that day. Here's my resume. You know, let me get this job. And they were like, all right, it's going to be like $100 for us to teach you how to pack a parachute. It's like a five hour course. We'll teach you how to do it. It's like 100 bucks. And I was like, done. Here you go. Um, so I do that. Uh, then they teach me how to pack, basically, mm-hmm. packing tandem rigs because it was just a tandem factory. They didn't have any fun jumpers there, fun jumpers being like the solo jumpers. It was all tandems because that's where the money is. And that's also where the liability isn't because tandems are totally safe. Fun jumpers, that's where shit starts get, getting dangerous. Um, so I learned how to pack, and they're paying me $5 per parachute to pack the parachute, which is egregiously low. It was taking me like an hour to pack each parachute. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy that's low. like... Yeah, I mean, it's it's Nothing. stupid. Like, I was getting paid $5 per hour. They, they, they had the pay system. It will pay you $5 per parachute, no matter how long it takes you to pack one. And then if you can even last a month, we'll give you $7 per parachute. Like, like after a month, we'll give you a, a raise to 7 I mean, that's still not much. <laughs> it's not a lot, especially because I was not a fast packer. I never was a fast packer. And then they said, if you get a senior parachute rigger certificate, which is like $2,000, then we'll give you $10 per rig. So I was like, let's do that. So after a couple months, I, I paid like $2,000 to get my uh, certification. And at like like three days after I paid that $2,000 non-refundable, they were like, hey, winter's coming. You were laid off. And I was like, I fucking work. I fucking hate working here anyway. I don't even want to work here. Wow. Like, like, I'm glad you guys laid me off. Fuck you. So I go into, and this is one of the, cool synchronicities that i've experienced mm. um love those I, my my plan i literally had it written on like a whiteboard like how you have over there i had it written on a whiteboard i'm gonna get hired as a parachute packer by uh february 19th 2018 at vegas extreme skydiving and i had that like i would i would try to like manifest that every day mm-hmm. and i just kept reading that like affirmation whatever it's called <laughs> so i get laid off on probably like a saturday I call them and I say, hey, are you guys hiring parachute packers? They're like, no. And I was like, I'm going to fucking drop off my resume anyway. And I was just thinking like every week I'm going to drop off a resume. And eventually they're okay. going to hire me. So on the Monday I throw on like a button-up shirt and I walk in. I'm like, hey, what's going on? I was super nervous, by the way, because this is my dream job. And yeah. I'm going to, to meet the boss for the first yeah, time. Yeah, but fucking props to you because who has the balls <laughs> to just think of their dream job and then just like consistently go after it like that like it's all i've done throughout my entire life i know and I, it's I can't inspirational it. and probably why <laughs> like i do that too because i've seen it in the flesh like i've seen you, you do it yeah Thank you. <laughs> so i know it's possible and like i, don't I know. get ideas in my head and i can't think about anything else until i do it one of the examples was starting this podcast That's powerful. dude i was literally wanting to start this podcast for like for two so years yeah and 
at least once a day, I would think like when I start my podcast, it's going to be like this. So thank you for being guest number two. But I go. <sighs> I'm already <honored to> <laughs> guest number two. <laughs> number, number two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so I, <laughs> I go to the drop zone and I'm like, uh, here's my resume. I'm working on my senior parachute regular certificate, uh, certificate and I've got probably a couple hundred parachutes packed. And he's like, hey, listen, dude, I don't fucking care. Can you pack a parachute? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, go pack a parachute then. So I go into the packing room and I like he watches me pack a parachute. And he's like, all right, that hopefully won't kill anyone. And he's like, listen, yesterday our old parachute packer broke his leg skydiving. Did a low turn. He's out. We don't have any parachute packers today. And we have 10 parachutes. Wow. I could hire you right now if you want to pack those 10 parachutes. And I was like, wow. oh, my fucking God. Did I really just get hired on the, the spot. spot? And I was like. Divine and, timing. Dude, it was so crazy. Uh, like, yes. it, like, like, it literally just felt like divine timing. And I, I was like, hold on. So your one parachute packer. Just broke his fucking leg. He, he can't work starting yesterday. And I came in today. Like, wow, that's that's so crazy. So I started packing there. Um, and I did that for like six months until I had the opportunity to be the CEO of the production company, mm -hmm. CEO. And <laughs> I was more of a manager, if we're being honest, <laughs> the manager of a production company. But I had the title CEO that I appointed to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had a not? business card that said CEO, but I was, I was, I was like a general manager. Still cool, but yeah. yeah. Um, so I pretty much, that's really what got me to stop skydiving. Mm. And then after that, I mean, I would occasionally skydive, but I think I've got a really good feeling that like now is the time that I'm going to go really get back into it. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Because I too. feel like by you keep on doing it, me <laughs> and my Eve, even me, just we're just going to keep on doing it. Too. Yeah. So does my Eve want to get into it too? He does. Because like, yeah. the, like after we went skydiving the first time, we were like, now what? Yeah. Now what is on yeah. our like fucking bucket list? And he's like, Bitch, why do why won't we just fucking get the license? I'm like, mm -hmm. why not? So that's what our new goal is. Here's what um, I would expect. I would expect two thousand dollars to get your AFF. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Another thousand dollars to get your A license. Okay. So three thousand dollars to be able to get the the USPA card that says, "Hey, I'm a skydiver." Yeah. Um. And once you get that, then, hey, you're a skydiver. You can go to a bunch of different drop zones. I'd recommend just going to Go Jump because I like that place. Yeah, I know. I love it. It's cool people, very right? Very chill, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't gone to any other place, but Lake I want to go to the um, – where's, where's the other one? Oceanside? Right? Oceanside, yeah. That's their other one, right? Yeah. yeah. I, we you need to have there. a B license to go there because uh, it's really windy because it's near the ocean, but yeah. I guess that makes sense. What's up, guys? What you just watched was a clip from the interview I did with Chantel Padilla. If you want to watch the full episode, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, it'll be the first link. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, I would appreciate it if you subscribed. My name is Braden Sky. Thanks for watching.